Welcome back to Tom's DIY Garage, where the name of the game is Do It Yourself. Whether you like to tinker, like me, or you like to occasionally save a buck, like me, or all of the above, like me, here we are. So, uh, if you hear the dull roar in the background, that's the air conditioner, because it's hot outside, as you probably noticed. It's Houston, and it's getting close to summer. And we do remain under the watchful eye of Xander the Shop Dog, because Xander likes to hang out with me and he likes to figure out how to do things as well, and I'm thankful for that. Um, and I'm wearing my MacGuckin hardware hat, which it's not a product placement, but it's a really cool hardware store in Boulder, Colorado, where my uh, oldest daughter lives. Um, so if you go, go ahead, take a look. Um, I did, I saw the hat, I liked it, I bought it, I'm wearing it. Here we are. Uh, today, I'm excited about the project because I was watching YouTube video, as so many people do, full of individuals who have shown how they did things, complicated things, easy things, all sorts of things in between. I didn't come up with the term YouTube University, but it's pretty good description. Uh, and I came across uh, a woman by the name of Anna White, who has a bunch of YouTube videos uh, showing how she made things. She has a website, AnnaWhite.com. Look it up if you're interested after this. Watch the whole video here first, though. And um, what I liked about it is there are some really cool kind of contemporary designs. And uh, Anna says in her bio on her website that she designed these things, built these things, because as she lives in Alaska, she can't readily find the things she likes and wants. So she makes them herself, which I think is really cool. And so I wanted to create an Adirondack chairs for the front of my house, but I wanted them to be extremely comfortable, um, have more of a clean, modern design, and I wanted them to be super easy to build. So this week, after four different prototypes and many hours of testing and tweaking just a little bit, I've come up with these Adirondack chairs. And what I really like about uh, her, her business model, if you will, is that she makes the plans for what she's designed available for free. So, behold Anna White's Adirondack chair. We're gonna build it here in Tom's DIY Garage. The materials for the chair are very simple and straightforward. I'm going to use four two by fours for the structure of the chair, and then pieces of one by 10 for the seat and back. It'll all be held together with glue and screws. I'm using regular dimensional lumber that you can easily find at any big box hardware store for a couple of reasons. Number one, this is a proof of concept project. How does it go together? Is it something that I like? Is it something that Mrs. Ziska likes? Secondarily, there's a cost savings. While we answer question number one, I've got about uh, a little less than $40 worth of lumber here. So it's not a terrible expense. And if it turns out nicely, if it's something that we want more of, or maybe something that I could make and sell, then I might invest a little bit more in some better lumber. For now, though, we'll work with this. Before we get started, the plans look pretty straightforward, with very clear, I think, instructions on where everything gets placed and how everything gets cut. We'll see how well it all turns out. For projects like this, I think it's a good idea to do all your cutting first. That way, when you get to assembly, you've got all the parts ready to go. So, let's put on our safety equipment and get to cutting. Once the pieces are cut, we can begin assembling. From the plans, this is what we have. This is the front leg, this is an armrest, and this is the back leg. This is cut at a 20 degree angle at both ends with a little notch here at the bottom here that it rests on the ground. We'll join this with some pocket screws and some glue. And then up here as well, we'll join those with some glue and some screws that go straight down.
Now that the two sides of the chair are assembled, we're going to join the two with some crossbars. There's one that goes right here in front, and then there's another one that goes back here. You'll recall that we're using pocket screws for this joint and glue as well. The glue goes here on the end. It provides the real strength to the joint, but the screws provide some stability that you don't want to be without. So you use both of them. All right, so in real time, let's go ahead and put this piece together. Let's start with adding some glue to the ends of the boards. I'm going to spread that out with your finger. The greater the surface of the glue, the stronger the joint will be. See, just like that. And then we'll get the other end too. Spread that out. Invariably, you have a gluey finger, so if you've got a damp rag nearby, you can kind of wipe your finger clean. And we're gonna put this, and there's a, there's a degree in the uh, in the uh, design, it's kind of eyeballed, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna put that there, and then I'm gonna add a clamp to hold, help hold it in place. Clamps are your friends, you can never have enough of them. That's what all the woodworkers tell me. And if you'll forgive me, those of us of a certain age need some uh, glasses for the close-in viewing as well. And then with some tension there, just going to kind of tap this into place so that it is where we want it to be. Tap, 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 tap. And I'm going to come around here, look at the front. That appears to be about where we want it to be. And before that glue sets, you get a little bit of wiggle room. And then when, once you get it right where you want it to be, you can tighten it down. Wipe off any excess glue that squeezes out with your damp cloth. Helps keep things pretty. And then you bring in the screwdriver. Just like this. And it's a little awkward, but. That ratcheting sound, if you don't have one of these, this is a kind of an adjustable tension on the, uh, it's a drill, but it drills and then it screws as well. So it's in the, it's in the screw driving mode. So that adjusts how much tension you want to put onto the screw so you don't over tighten it and then blow right through the wood that you're trying to attach. So once it reaches that end, you hear that ratcheting sound. And over here on this side, like that and then we can release the clamp because we are locked in with those first two screws and then we can set the last two set. Now we also have one back here and it fits in laterally like that. I'm going to need a slightly larger clamp for that one so excuse me while I step this way and get this clamp instead. Like I said you can never have enough clamps. I have 
probably a couple dozen clamps. There are more. Different sizes do different things. So I'm going to kind of get this one close. And then, here. We're going to let gravity do a little bit of its work for us. Oh. Got a little bit of a little bit of torsion here. All that noise is not something you want to hear. But there, to put that together that just like that. Again, we'll glue the end. Spread it out. Add a little more glue. Spread it out. Get this side as well. Spread it out. Wipe the excess off. And position it. And clamp it. Tighten it down, tighten it. Tight. And then drive some screws in. Four screws. This machine. Three, and four. And the basic structure of the chair is now assembled. Next step in the directions is to add the seating to the chair, because that's kind of important. I have two boards just like this. These are 22 and a half inches wide. This is the one by 10 board that we cut, and they'll be attached to that sloping leg right there. Then we get to the chair back. I've already clamped this piece into place and pre-drilled the holes so that we can get on with that. Another one goes on this side. But as you look at this angle, you can see the chair kind of take shape and the comfort that the Adirondack chair provides. So let's get on with the drilling portion here. These are three inch screws. Add a little more torque to that. I also countersunk the hole so that uh, there's 
shoot. I lost track of one of the screws. And then this piece up here. But I countersunk the, the, uh, the holes so that the head of the screw goes flush with the wood. Just like that. We'll do the other side and then we'll put on the actual back of the chair. And with these last pieces going on, it's starting to look like a chair. You can see for yourself, but before it's finished, you need to sand it down. Finally, I'm going to put a finish on the chair. You'll recall that I'm using just basic lumber here. It's not designed to survive well outdoors like pressure treated lumber or cedar, for example. So I'm gonna put a stain on it. And that's a, an aesthetic thing here. For me, it's gonna be a light gray. But more importantly, there's a sealer in this as well. It provides some resistance to the moisture, but more importantly, some UV protection. So it lengthens the amount of time that this chair will survive in the outdoors. When you apply the finish, the stain, the paint, whatever it is, I would suggest that you cover all sides of the project. The tops, the bottoms, the nooks, the crannies, the corners. Number one, I think it looks better, but it also maximizes the protection. Paying particular attention to those cut ends of the wood, like the bottom of the legs, because you want to minimize how much moisture can get in there. So you could use a brush to do it or just as easily with stain a rag and then you apply it and wipe off the excess before you let it dry. And when it's all done, this is the Anna White Adirondack chair. It has nice clean lines. It is easy to build from free plans. What more could you ask? Other than the fact that it's really comfortable to sit in, which is a nice plus. I think she did a nice job designing all of the angles. Couldn't ask for more. Again, about $40 worth of lumber, plus uh, some screws, some glue, and some finish, and a couple hours work. It's a pretty nice deal. If you'd like to build one, send me a picture. If you've got a question of something you'd like to build separately or a question you'd like answered, let me know. Hit me up on email or Facebook or Twitter slash X, all the usual places. I look forward to hearing from you and finding some answers for you. Until that time though, let me relax a little bit. Nice cold mineral water by the pool. That's Zeke. He's not the shop dog, but he's a good dog. And uh, I'll give some thought to the next project. Until next time, I'm Tom in Tom's DIY Garage. I'll see you.